Be prepared for hyperinflation, food shortages, and economic collapse. The longer the people are stuck in their houses, the more the economy gets destroyed. And the more the food supply chain gets destroyed. Business is now at risk of permanent shutdowns. The majority of service industry jobs are not coming back. Another 3 million Americans applied for unemployment last week. In eight weeks, 36.5 million people have filed jobless claims. So much for that V-shape recovery. They are setting us up. People are exhausting their entire unemployment benefits. The second wave of layoffs is coming, and the $600 is gone, and many won't even qualify. Everything is broken or will be broken in a few months. If the virus doesn't kill you, the government measures will kill you by taking your job, limiting your ability to work, limiting what you can eat and where you can travel to. The outlook is bleak at best, not due to the virus but due to the government's inactions and then the government's actions. Too many dollars chasing too few goods. Lockdown means little or no new production, and consuming what was stored as surplus. The Fed continues printing lots of dollars. We all start bidding together on the same scarce resources. All of this will result in hyperinflation. Half the country without income and no goods to buy while the Fed squanders trillions. Money being pumped in, the supply of goods is reduced. This can only result in hyperinflation. Production under quarantine is not elastic, so the money can only pump up prices. We saw this classically in Venezuela, it wasn't so much money printing that caused the issue. But growth in goods and services not matching the money printed. Here now we have the same. Goodbye financial system. This year would see an intentional effort to crash the financial system. No surer way to do it than set in motion hyperinflation. If nobody's producing, nobody's consuming. Inflation is looming. You can't increase the money supply by a third, decrease consumer goods, and not see inflation. Get ready to pay much more for groceries. The stock market is a scam. The lunatics are now totally in charge of the asylum. Stock market charts just show how happy the elites are getting bailed out again by corrupt Fed. If you invested in this insane market, you are just riding the inflation gravy train. The trend is your friend and doesn't fight the Fed. We are in a gigantic Ponzi scheme for the rich to get richer thanks to the Federal Reserve. We are just another banana republic. Just bigger designed to keep the rich rich and in power. This is about bailing out the oligarchy that is currently running the show. Just throw out a couple of peanuts to the masses to make it look like it's for everyone. Total shit show scam Ponzi scheme. While the people suffer, the rich are getting richer at the expense of the taxpayers. The billionaires always get the lion's share of the bailout. The rich don't pay the tax. They defer to the upper middle class. Taxpayers are paying 50% and cannot get ahead. This is the greatest depression. Hope everyone is prepped and ready. Own your abode, gold, silver, stable coin, crypto. Stock up on essential supplies. Get out of stocks, bonds, government bonds. When hyperinflation comes, people will lose trust in the dollar, and the government will collapse. We don't have an economic crisis because of the health crisis, the economic crisis is a product of how we have chosen to react to the pandemic. The pandemic was just the perfect tool to hide the crimes committed by the Fed. Their goal is to destroy the middle class and small and medium businesses. The land of slaves and sheep run by banksters. Money printing is a hard habit to kick. Depressions are planned. Inflation is planned. Wars are planned. Workers and taxpayers exist to provide the monarchs all they desire. The central banks are privately owned and in business for personal profit only. They care only about increasing taxes, looting the treasury, rigging the markets, robbing the pensions, etc. This depression will be horrific beyond belief and we are already in an extremely depressed state. If you are really looking forward to widespread looting out of control, then I do hope you are ready and totally prepped with years of food supplies. Crops harvests are disappearing already in a bad way. This is it global one world tyranny behind the mask of a virus, notice the word mask. It's here, planned economic destruction. A country that consumes much more than it produces, financed by ongoing money creation, will have more money chasing fewer goods and services. Once the initial shock wears off and the recovery begins, the inflation will begin to show up, and it probably won't be limited to the share prices of money losing story stocks. 
Trumps have been trying to starve the Chinese with the soy deal, and most of their pigs died. Similar situation with locusts appearing over most of the Middle East and East Africa. Forest fires wiped out a lot of Australian livestock. People often forget that grain is a commodity on major exchanges, though mostly irreverent in the age of QE and ZIRP. Globally, food prices will rise, and wages will decrease, meaning more food insecurity. The real killers are if environmentalists try to cut down on farming by letting the land they still control through trusts lay fallow. The population control agenda was always best fulfilled by famines, disease, sterility, and abortion. Royals may try and bank on royal land ownership by artificially increasing food costs. Inflation is certainly coming at food prices since the supply is being cut now. Can't imagine other things won't follow as demand picks up and supply dwindles. Do you think many of these baby boomer run businesses are going to restart after this? No way. Global trade is going down, and that means less supply at higher prices for the things people will need. Remember that because of the grand solar minimum, farmers, ranchers have already been getting slaughtered. Hunger will return with a vengeance to the world. I have been concerned about this since last year, when half of all the fertile farmland in the Midwest was underwater, and crops couldn't be planted. Now, this. It's going to get bad, real bad. When bank accounts are seized, and pantries go bare, expect social unrest. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The price of food is up 2.6% in one month. Prices US consumers paid for groceries jumped 2.6% in April, the largest one-month pop since February 1974. The spike in supermarket prices was broad-based. The price of the meats, poultry, fish, and egg category rose 4.3%, fruits and vegetables climbed 1.5%, cereals and bakery products advanced 2.9%, and dairy goods gained 1.5%. We were told food prices were going up because fuel prices rose years ago, they went up and stayed up. Today fuel in the toilet, but food still going up. What gives? Used to be food was always cheap, even for the poor. Those days are gone sadly. Price inflation, for food, is here now. Inflation comes in various flavors, money supply, prices, assets. One of the bizarre aspects of the global depression resulting from the coordinated shutdown of most world economies due to the coronavirus pandemic is that we have experienced a collapse in both aggregate supply and demand. But if demand drops that far, the economy is in a death spiral. I'm trying to imagine the government staying out of it can't see it. We will see helicopter money like never before to get people to buy stuff to support the economy. In other words, any deflation that appears is going to have huge wads of cash thrown at it. Inflation is only the only way the treasury will be able to manage their way out from under the debt load. They can retire debt at a discount using cheaper dollars. It was successfully accomplished some 80 years ago. We have fewer things being produced, and fewer services offered with an increased quantity of money regardless of the fact majority went to bail out the crony capitalists. Fewer goods, services chased by increased supply in money means inflation when velocity increases. And it's global, not just US. Australia, for example, implemented a package worth 20% of GDP specifically aimed at Main Street. Japan's policies largely escalated in the last eight years, it's not a relative comparison. The first clue will be with large devaluations in the yuan followed by others. That's when you know the tide is coming in. Hopefully, most here will be stacked and ready already when that occurs as early as later this year. Rather weird how the dollar and financial system is on the brink of collapse, the only thing keeping it afloat is the massive money printing, which is what has artificially skyrocketed the stock market, while this new virus emerged in China recently. Just waiting for it to mutate before it spreads like wildfire and has a high mortality rate, thus, deflect away from the bankers who engineered the coming financial collapse, fleecing of the masses, and eradication of the middle class. So when the next 1918 Spanish flu-like or worse, pandemic hits, everything will come to a standstill, including distribution. Thus, the markets, banks, and dollar will collapse. The perfect way to escape blame for actually causing the collapse by their fractional reserve Ponzi scheme running since 1913, which is inherently designed to fail. The money supply doesn't exist. It's all digital. That is why money velocity is still low. 
it doesn't trickle down. If all currency inflates to remove the debt, that means the debt itself also doesn't exist in the first place. The system is basically just a glorified raw material extraction from the third world to the first world, while the first world is debt slaves because the money doesn't exist. You need debt to have money. And then the business whatever the f you do doesn't have traffic because there is no market, so there is a need for even more debt. Our system is debt based. That means money is borrowed into circulation. Banks lever 10 to 1, which means they have $1 for every 10 they loan out. When that $10 loan is deposited into a bank, the receiving bank can now loan $100. Now there's $110 owed debt, backed by $1 of real money, and the cycle never stops. They do this to enslave all of us. The problem eventually is there's too little real money in the system. This pandemic is used to distract all of us while they shore up their slave system by dumping trillions into the economy. Remember, it's not just the US they are dumping money into. All central banks are one private corporation, and they are injecting cash into most countries. This is what's going on. Countries have a right to print their own money, and they don't need to borrow it from a private corporation to use. The elephant in the room that nobody ever seems to notice, let alone address, is that economies function from the bottom up, but money flows from the top down. If the top and the bottom have similar goals, advancement of society and standard of living for everyone, then the top-down approach possibly can work. If the top has goals that only seek to improve the standard of living of the top, at the expense of everyone else, then the issuance of money can never possibly fix any economic malady, as the malady is caused by the group that receives the money. Until governments truly embrace the mission of improving society as a whole, we are doomed to suffer repeatedly worsening crisis, ultimately leading to conflagration. Of course, governments need to be held to account. Society has naively believed that voting will right previous governments' wrongs, but history has shown that not to be the case. The United States was sold to the top officially in 1913, with the rest of the world selling out to the Bretton Woods Agreement when they were extremely weak. Until the Fed and Bretton Woods are abolished, and private central banking outlawed, absolutely nothing can be fixed. If anyone is still under the illusion that voting is going to accomplish that, sadly, most are, then the world is doomed. If the world is to survive and progress, then the people of the world will have to make demands that cannot be rebuffed. That doesn't mean protesting, which means force because that is all the power that understands. We have five possible scenarios ahead of us. A Russian scenario, revolution. A Zimbabwe scenario, hyperinflation. A German scenario, revolution followed by hyperinflation. A Serbian scenario, hyperinflation followed by the revolution. A Venezuelan scenario, hyperinflation followed by foreign invasion. There is also a Hungarian scenario, hyperinflation followed by more hyperinflation followed by fascism and then Nazism. A wonderful time is guaranteed for all who own a bunker. We have never been closer to a hyperinflationary event as we will be when those checks hit the streets. The Fed cannot keep monetizing this debt. People want to hoard toilet paper, but not gold. Can they not see the coming hyperinflation? More money and fewer goods. Do the math. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.